In this video, we'll talk about Euler's formula, and we'll use Taylor series to derive this important result for complex numbers. Some of you will not really even know too much about what complex numbers are, so we'll talk very briefly about those. Uh, we have this number i, and how is it defined? It's defined to be the square root of minus 1. And the introduction of this number i, which is called the imaginary number, allows us to solve many kinds of algebraic problems that we couldn't solve uh, with just real numbers. So, for instance, if we have the equation x squared plus a equals 0, or let's say a squared, uh, x squared plus a squared equals 0, with only real numbers we could not solve this equation for x. It would have no real answer. Uh, because we would try to solve it, we would say x squared is negative a squared, and then if we try taking square roots, plus or minus the square root of negative a squared. Well, that's a negative number. Uh, a squared would be positive, and so negative a squared would be negative. There's no way to answer uh, to solve for x with just the real numbers. And so this imaginary number is introduced, and it turns out that with the introduction of this additional number i, you can solve any kind of algebraic problem. Uh, there are no further complicated numbers that you need to introduce to solve algebraic problems that have i's in them. Uh, you're sort of done. Uh, it, it's, it's the final entry in a series of numbers that starts with the, the integers and proceeds on to the rational numbers, fractions of integers, and then irrational numbers, uh, making up the entire real number line. Uh, and if you introduce just this one extra type of number, these imaginary numbers, uh, then you can solve any kind of algebraic problem. Uh, and that is the, the topic of the class complex analysis. We are not going to concern ourselves with all of that. We just want to know what is a complex exponential. What happens if I do e to the i x, where this is an imaginary number, x is real, i is imaginary. What does this mean? Um, there are a variety of ways one can approach this. We will simply use material from Calculus 2, namely Taylor series, to identify the meaning of this expression. So remember that for real arguments, e to the x, we had the Taylor series. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on. The infinite series of numbers uh, of terms in this Taylor series, it converges for all values of x, which is good, uh, and this is the Taylor series. So I don't know yet what this means, but I can turn this function e to the x into a sum of polynomial terms. Let me just take the argument up here and plug it in and see what we get. So if e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus s cubed and, and so on, then e to the ix must be 1 plus ix plus ix squared over 2 factorial plus ix cubed over 3 factorial and so on. But this can be simplified a little bit because if i equals the square root of minus 1, then i squared is minus 1. i cubed is i squared times i, which is negative i. Sorry, negative i. i to the fourth equals i cubed times i, which is negative i squared, which is negative negative 1, which is 1. And they then repeat. i to the fifth is i and so on. So using this information, we can turn some of these i's into real numbers. So 1 stays the same, i x does not change, but here we'll have i squared x squared. i squared is minus 1. So that becomes minus x squared over 2 factorial. i cubed is minus i, so that becomes minus i x cubed over 3 factorial. The next term, i x all to the fourth, would be simply x to the fourth. 
The next term would be i to the fifth, x to the fifth, which would be i, x to the fifth, over 5 factorial, and so on. Now, what we can do is collect all the real terms, this one, this one, that one, and so on, and put them all together. 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, and so on. And then let's collect all the imaginary terms and factor out the i. So here's an imaginary term, imaginary, imaginary. So they all have a common factor i. x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Sorry, 3 factorial, not 3. And so on. And this should look familiar. This is just the Taylor series for cosine x. And this is just the Taylor series for sine x. So we arrive at Euler's famous result, e to the i x is cosine x plus i sine x. And e to the i bx, simply replace the x with a bx, we would obtain cosine bx plus i sine bx. So this is a very common result. It allows us to turn pure imaginary exponentials into sines and cosines. It also allows us to uh, write what's called a complex exponential, e to the a plus bi x, this now being any constant number times x, not just uh, a real number, but any complex number with a real part and an imaginary part uh, times x would be e to the ax, e to the i bx equals e to the ax cosine bx plus i sine 